we uh, cleared those trees and we were worried our cucumbers weren't going to make it. But look at that sucker, he's huge. We thought it had too much frost damage and that they're all going to die. I love cucumbers. So we have our first harvestable vegetable there. And these ones are a little slow, but they're on their way before next frost. So we're going to get some cucumbers. We managed to save this plant. Peppers there are doing well. And uh, look at how much the cucumber has grown and is covering everything, which is pretty cool. Um, our squash has just blown up in our three sisters garden. It's actually jumped the fence. It's growing down the hill outside of the fence. And uh, corn is maybe a little bit behind, but it is shot right up after that uh, extra light was, was on it and a few heavy rains too. So uh, carrots are doing well as well, even though the groundhog nibbled the tops off. Beans, you name it. We've already harvested a bunch of beans and some cucumbers. So um, that groundhog looks like he's gonna leave us alone, I hope. So yeah, good things going on on the home front here with the garden. Exciting, uh, you know, summer homestead type project. and. Uh, both me and Tori are really enjoying it. Okay, here we are at my house on the Magnetowan River and I am just doing all the last preparations for a big trip that I'm doing tomorrow. It is going to be a 14 day solo trip in the Arctic watershed. And tomorrow early afternoon, I'm gonna be driving up to Concord, Ontario. And then I am going to go in on an old mining road the next morning and put in on the floodwood and paddle and portage lake hopping to the very beginning headwaters of a river called the North French, the uppermost headwaters. And from what I hear, because I actually have contacted someone that has done this route and got his river notes this time, I often just head out there with topographic maps, but I've heard it is quite an alder choke, logs down, very interesting. Apparently the water level is unseasonably high and this is August, so that would be good because then it would be too low. So I'm, I'm hoping I have water. Um, and then it turns into an advanced level whitewater river. And from what I've heard, it could rival the Kasagami. Very, very untraveled route. Uh, maybe two or three groups that are known has paddled it in, uh, in the last, I don't know, recent history anyways. Um, of course, it was used uh, by Moose Creek for First Nation people, uh, the lower stretches coming up the Moose River and into the interior, but not for many, many years. So it is going to be a real freaking adventure. Of course, I'm going to be filming the whole thing. I'm going to bring an entire YouTube series, um, Jim's Arctic Watershed solo trip. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet but uh, it should be pretty exciting if my hand holds up. That's concerning me. And also the challenge of this river is a, a super advanced level whitewater river too. Um, I've paddled the Kasagami, uh, which is not too far away from that, which is probably harder, but I've heard this one rivals it. So nothing I don't have the experience for, but uh, solo with the hand, you know, it gets you concerned. But uh, what do they say? They say that Bravery is only fear hanging on by another minute, baby. And that's what I'm going with right now. So, you know, nobody that was ever brave was never scared. So I'm gonna go out there and I know it's gonna be an awesome experience. Hopefully I'm gonna be slamming some giant brook trout and I'm gonna be catching walleye. Walleye and brook trout or pickerel uh, as they're better known here in Canada. I mean, do you have two more amazing fish to be going after than brook trout and walleye and there should be some pike on the lakes and then i'm going to finish in moosonee ontario then i'm going to take the polar bear express train that comes all the way back uh, to cochrane and drive home so kind of last minute decision covid sort of messed things up and my plans and, and turned things around and i kind of jumped on this trip started the planning a little later than i, I wanted to but with some good elbow grease today on the planning side i should be ready to go um, and I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks. Tori is going to hold down the fort, take care of Wesley. She's got a trip coming up and she's got a couple of her courses called Paddle Like a Girl. She leads workshops geared towards women teaching them how to backcountry camp and canoe. And then in September, Tori and I are going to be going to the Gaspé Peninsula of Quebec to fly fish for salmon and pull a whitewater river there. We're going to be backpacking on the Appalachian Trail as well. and. Uh, fishing and we got to hopefully if we can get a captain 
Uh, we'll be doing some serious fishing for some striped bass too. So some serious adventures to come. I'm, I, it's going to be so much editing, but there's going to be a ton, of, a ton of great videos coming out. I might not get anything booming up right away. I'm still going to put uh, the last uh, video and show you what happened with my hand and going to retrieve our gear from the bush with me and my brother. So that's going to be the next one. But uh, until I get back, the big series that I'm running aren't are going to have to be on hold for a little bit. So bear with me. But still got some cool stuff coming up and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Just gonna go grab my canoe. A lot of work to plan these trips man, especially when you're filming. Fred, the neighborhood dog is here. Hey, bud. Hi there. <laughs> I thought I'd find a, a different venue to uh, record this next interview. And I wanted to cover a question I get a lot is, Jim, why don't you use an aerial drone to scout rapids? Or Jim, why don't you bring a drone to scout blind corners and rapids on the river? Well, the fact is I do have an aerial drone and I think a drone actually would have a, a place in some situations. When you're out there, the reality of it is you're in a remote location, you only have so much battery power and those drone batteries take a lot of juice. So you can't just charge them off a regular backup. Plus I need that backup to recharge my GoPro batteries and my camcorder batteries as well. Um, so that's an issue. Um, I, and also there's a few more things where for example, uh, a drone, you need a flat surface to take off. You need no overhanging tree branches or else it'll crash. And uh, you also need to unpack it. So a lot of the time the drone is packed in my bag. So you gotta unpack it, you gotta unfold it, you gotta turn it on, you gotta get a smartphone out, you gotta put the smartphone into the controller because that's your screen. You gotta turn the controller screen on, go to an app, find the thing, mess with the settings, Things happen that are annoying sometimes. It doesn't just work, so you gotta mess with it a bit. And then you gotta put it all away afterwards. And if you do see a runnable rapid around a blind corner, well, unfortunately a drone is just not gonna do the job in scouting a rapid that is any serious level of difficulty because the screen is this big. So you're trying to look at the screen and you're trying to line things up. And oftentimes you need to get down level with the river to really get an understanding. Rapids look a lot easier from above and it's really hard to pick a line, a course to uh, miss all the obstructions, the rocks, the huge frothing holes, huge waves, down trees, uh, gargoyles, whatever it might be, as you're navigating through this rapid, um, and uh, it really needs your own eyes to go there. So, you know, in some cases, a drone might be good if I'm already flying it for my shots to go with my the videos I'm making. I can maybe check what's around river, or in some cases, I suppose you could, but for me, it's batteries, a pain in the butt, and you're gonna have to walk down there and scout it with your eyes anyways if there's actually a challenging rapid to run. So all in, I'd rather just get out of the boat and boot it down nine times out of 10. But, uh, you know, so in theory, it works a lot better than actuality. But, um, you know, I suppose there would be times when uh, it definitely would be useful. The other day I was using it um, just to shoot a waterfall and, you know, I, I, I was getting a nice shot and I went around the corner and I said, oh, Ted, that's not a portage right around the corner because we, we peaked when we were on the ground and, I, and uh, I saw, well, we can carry over on the left. Oh, great. But, you know, we would have figured that out when we got there pretty quickly anyway. So um, uh, definitely an interesting tool in some situations, but not necessarily practical when you're out there in a wilderness setting, you know, overhanging branches, swift moving uh, water, rapids you have to run, et cetera, et cetera. So great question though, but uh, unfortunately not usually something that I would do or that most uh, whitewater paddlers in most scenarios would use to scout as a drone. And uh, that's about it, and I'll see you after I get back from my big trip.